Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Know How is brought to you by iFixit. You can fix it, and iFixit makes it easy with free step by step repair guides, high quality replacement parts, and all the tools you'll ever need. For $10 off your purchase of $50 or more, go to ifixit.com slash twit and enter the code KNOWHOW at checkout. And by NatureBox. Order great tasting healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy delicious treats like maple habanero pretzel pops. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. On this episode of Know How... We're on a mission from Gad. That's it? <laughs> <laughs> That's the tease? That's the tease. <laughs> I have no, no idea, reference no, to anything No else. connection whatsoever. <laughs> are we going to do Yeah, that? later on. Welcome to Know How. It's the Twitch show where we build, bend, break, and upgrade. I'm Father Robert Ballas here. I'm Brian Burnett. And for the next, uh, what, 45 minutes or so? 30, 40, 30 45 30, 40, minutes. Maybe an hour, right. who knows. We're going to be showing you some of the projects that we've been working on, so hopefully you can take that knowledge back and geek out on your own. Uh, sound about right? Yeah, that's what we shoot for every week. That's what we uh, shoot for. We never get that. Yeah. Yet, but <laughs> we'll hey, see what happens. Knows. Now, I, I know, for the first story, that this the, the banter, I actually wanted to talk about something that's got me excited. Yes. Uh, over the, the, the weekend, Verizon announced that all of their plans are going to go symmetrical. So if you've got five, if you're one of the very lucky few who has files, that's their fiber to the door uh, uh, internet plan, you, you'll now have full speed in both directions. So for example, if you had their, their, tw their 15 five plans, so that's 15 megabits per second down and mm -hmm. five megabits per second up, it's now 1515. The same goes for the, the 50 megabit plan and the 75 megabit plan. Now you get the same speeds in both directions. Now, this is what I like, Brian. This seems to be a direct response to the fact that Google in their Google Fiber pro pro project, right. they're <coughs> offering symmetrical speed. So it's one gigabit per second in both directions. Right. Uh, in the past, the ISPs have been very reluctant to offer this because they said, well, people just don't use it, right? Well, and that might also be because they didn't have any competition. They didn't so. have any competition, right. <laughs> but, but, you know, even, even when we talked about the show on uh, my, uh, my networker show, Twiet, on Monday, mm -hmm. people in the chat room were saying, well, I, don't, I don't use uploads. Why, why do I care? But, I mean, think about it. How many times do you upload to YouTube? How many times do you upload your photos? How many right. times uh, have you ever wanted to be able to back up all of your computers to the cloud really, really quickly? That all requires upload, upload. speed. And yeah. that's important for us too when we're doing Skype. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. If you do any sort of video conferencing, upload is the limiting factor. It's not right. the download. As we can attest to here in the Brick House, it's yeah. always that link coming back to the studio that seems to get trashed. Right. Well, I think the connection we have here is Comcast, and it's 100 yeah. megabit symmetrical? Down. Or down? Down. 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 Okay. Down. It's fast. Yeah. It's fast. Well, the, here's the thing. Even if you're not doing any of those things, even if you don't upload to YouTube, even if you don't back up your computers to the, to the cloud, even if you don't video conference, you still need upload speed. Remember yes. a, a few weeks ago, we were talking about ports. Right, and right, the port forwarding. Right, and how there was t there was TCP and then there was UDP. And right. UDP is sort of, it's a shotgun approach. I take right. all my data, I put it into packets, and I send it out, and that's and it. If it gets there, it gets there. If it doesn't, eh, mm. who cares? Yeah. TCP is actually the, the communication protocol that most of us use more often. Mm -hmm. That's two-way. Right? right, because the the receiving side has to verify that it received the packet and that everything is. But there's set. more overhead to that. There's more overhead, and there's also more back and forth talk. Right. So even if you don't video conference, even if you don't say podcast, so you need to upload stuff right. to YouTube, your internet speeds will still increase if they're no longer choking your upstream side. Absolutely. No, I am all for having fast upload speeds, but I kind of have to reserve my, my judgment because I don't use, I don't have Verizon. It's not right. no really available it. here. Yeah. Uh, but also there's that article that came out about the guy who bypassed Verizon because they were throttling Netflix. Right, right. So it's like, great, yeah, like you've got symmetrical, but as long as Verizon 
lets you use it for stuff. Like. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's that's the ultimate thing, and that's what gets me more excited. It's not the fact that it's symmetrical. That's cool from a, from a network geek yeah. perspective. That's cool, but it's the fact that Verizon seems to be reacting to, to Google. Yes. I like that. It Finally, means they're scared. <clears throat> there's some pressure being put on the ISP. Has been we we need faster internet so I can do stuff. Right, yeah. And if, if Verizon and if Comcast and if Time Warner and AT&T start saying, oh, well, we better start offering these things to our yes. customers, otherwise they're going to go someplace else, that can only be a good thing. Right. And without the competition, they can just kind of roll you over and then say, hey, here's this triple play plan that you might want to do. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, oh, man, if Google could come out here to Petaluma. I'd like that. I know. I, I don't know. think it's going to happen anytime soon. No, but not at all. I remember a long time ago, I won't say his name, but a Google employee came in, I think when I first started working at the Brick House, and he said, if the other ISPs don't play ball, Google's going to put pressure on them. And that was right before they announced they were going into Kansas City, I think it was in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Google Fiber, thank you. Comcast has also announced that they're going to go symmetrical, but instead of speeding up the uploads, mm -hmm. they're actually slowing down the downloads. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not seriously. No, that, I, I could get sued for slander there. No, they're not doing that. Now, uh, Brian, we mm -hmm. sent you out with a very specific task, and that was to do this NFC thing. Right. Well, t so Tony came to me because he wasn't really sure what NFC did or what you could do with it. Like, um, but to explain it, to start, with, let's start from the basics. NFC stands for near. <laughs> Field. <laughs> Near field communication. I was thinking of some other NFC for a second. <laughs> it's a football and league. <laughs> as you would imagine, that means that is a very short range of communication, so within like an inch. And it's a standard used by a lot of uh, devices, mostly smartphones you see are NFC incapable. Uh, so today I wanted to show what you can do with some NFC tags that I got off of Amazon for about, oh, about $10. But uh, before that, I should say that NFC is based off of RFID, which I know you've heard of, yes. which is radio stand frequency, mm -hmm. radio frequency identification, which uses electromagnetic induction to transmit information. Yeah. So if you've ever used like a bus pass or something like that, if you've done public transit, it's the same same sort of uh, principle. And, and the important thing there is that you don't need a battery in the client unit. So for example, your bus pass that was using RFID it actually gets its power from the from the reader. Right. It receives a little bit of wireless power, enough for it to, to send back a radio signal that includes all the data that it's supposed to give off, and boom, that's what you've got. Yeah. NFC is the same idea, it's just much lower power and it's much lower range. Because right. the problem with RFID was, as we hackers <laughs> figured out, is you could read it from a long distance. I mean, if you've right. got the right antenna, you can start picking Messing up people's RFID it. stuff. <laughs> so NFC was created, yeah to give you something that's basically contact. Yes. You, you have to be within the very short range in order for NFC to, to set off. Yes, and when you're using two devices, like two cell phones, one will be active when it's sending information, the other one will be passive as it's receiving information. But when you're doing this, like if we bumped and we sent like an MP3 or a web page or a picture, they're both being active. But then, like you were saying, these tags are passive, and there's no there's no battery or anything like that, but they can receive and transmit data. So, let's see, what was I got? Oh, and also another example I was trying to think of was, uh, was it Quai or Qui? Chi. Chi? Chi. Chi, the wireless yes. uh, charging system, is also based on the same principle as, as NFC. But right, it's just, it's a prolonged uh, um, transmission right. that the client device can turn into charging power. Exactly. Um, and actually, that's what this does. This supports that. Uh, if you, so if you take the backing off this phone, mm -hmm. there's actually a coil inside this back cover that can receive that energy, and then it charges uh, the battery on the phone. So this yeah. is a Qi device. That's what I wish my Moto X had. Maybe the next version. Womp, <laughs> <laughs> but then the other mode that you can do with NFC is read-write. And so when you get pick up these little tags, um, these NFC tags, you can download an app off of... Um, there's a few different apps on the Google Store, but the one I decided to go with was just basically called NFC Tools. And there'll be a link for that later in the, uh, in the show notes. Oops, sorry, I just You just set it. it off. So I've actually programmed these two chips to do something different. But... <clears throat> In these, inside the app, 
you can approach an NFC tag and sh see what it what it has what information it has on it. So now I'm looking at all the information that's saved on this tag, um, and it's writable. It can be read only, and it says um, it has a record on it. But so say I wanted to add a task to my tag. And these are helpful for like if you wanted to do something in your car, like you wanted right. to turn on your Bluetooth and have it play music when you're going to get into your car. Yeah, you can have an NFC tag trigger a specific sequence of events, Event, yeah. which is nice. For example, I've, I've used NFC tags uh, to give people the Wi-Fi password for my house. Yes. So yeah. as you come into my house, there's a little tag that says tap here and uh, then, for Wi-Fi access. And yep. if they tap their device, it will give them the encryption password for the guest network. Yeah, uh, it's a lot easier than someone saying, "Hey, uh, what's your what's your <sighs> password?" Okay, here's my 12-digit yeah. number that I wrote down a piece of paper for you. Yeah, that makes it a lot simpler. And um, if you really want to get nitty-gritty, Russell was talking to me about his home automation stuff he's been doing. Oh yeah. And there's another app called Tasker, which really lets you get into it. And um, he's actually got it set so that uh, he has lights come on in his house when he like taps it and stuff. So you can get pretty crazy, but we're gonna keep it basic for uh, today. Um, so, but once you've downloaded NFC tools, you'll also need to uh, download this extension called NFC Tasks, and that. That's just an add-on to the app that allows you to use NFC to, to trigger tasks. Um, so it doesn't really do much other than just let you do the tag stuff. But say but you yeah, want, but you get to set the tags, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, which is the whole the cool thing about it. So I say I have an empty tag. These two I've already programmed to do something, but I'll show you in a sec. So I like pogs. <laughs> yeah. So when I go to Let's see, tag, tasks, uh, I want to add a task. There's a whole list of different things you can have your phone do to be triggered by. Um, so what I want to do first is I'm going to have it low, let's launch an app whenever I tag this. Like say I sit down at my desk and I always open a certain app when I get down to my desk. So <laughs> I always play bike race when I sit down at my desk because I'm not going to be working. Um, but so it lists that up. Oops, go back. And you can you can um, load more than one thing, which actually I have something loaded. So delete that. Hey, Alex, can you uh, digitally zoom this and rotate it for our audience? Just Sorry. So. I'll try and angle that, but I wasn't looking at the TV. <laughs> Is that better? Is that better? There we go. Is that okay, Internet? Is that okay? <laughs> now I have to angle myself. Okay, but you can actually you can do multiple things at once. So I want to load that app, and I not only that, but I want to make my display brighter as soon as I get in. So I'll set the, the display brightness up, and uh, what else could we add? We could add something else. Uh, let's let's change our sound. Let's make it so you know there's no volume though, because I don't want anyone else to hear me playing bike race when I sit down. So now I've got the three things that are going to happen when I write to this tag. So that's about 96 bytes, which I think, I forget how much space, there's not a lot of space no, on these tags. No, it's very, very small. It's very limited, but you can string quite a few things together. I mean, me and Alex were writing text messages back to e back and forth between each other on them, and that was... That Which was is fun. always good, because you hand someone something to read your text message. That's Right, nice. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so now I can write to this little tag here. I'm just going to, boop, write completed. Cool. All right, so... I go back to my home screen, and I've noticed on Android you do need to be in an unlocked. You can't do it right. from a power. Well, that's off. that's a security thing. That's a security they, they don't want thing. someone writing a malicious tag. Right. That says, As yeah. Send contacts list to me. <laughs> Is it no? Really? Yeah. 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 No, that would not be good. So make sure that you uh, you're in not in your lock screen. And then if I tap it, it's lowered my volume. It's turning up the brightness, and now it's launching a uh, bike race. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. Now you've done you've done it to you've done it to Daisy Chain those three events, but they could be anything. For example, uh, it could be uh, in in Russell's example. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's say you have an NFC tag on your nightstand. Mm -hmm. So you put it on your nightstand, and your phone knows to turn brightness all the way down, turn off all sound, uh, turn off alerts so you don't get the blinking light, and, and set an alarm. Set an alarm and. Talk to the home automation system to turn, turn off, off the, lights. the lights. Yeah, and that's that's all programmable within the interface for the uh, the NFC programmers. Yeah, 
So that that's something I was playing with, and if you order this pack that I got, you get all these cool stickers too. Which, Who by the way, if any of you play Ingress, uh, join the Resistance. Yes. Blue side, just do that. Blue side? Wait, Blue side. I thought, that is this the Resistance? No, that's Resistance. That's just the key. That's what? The, I thought that, that was Enlightened, and that's no, Enlightened is green. The Resistance is a blue. That's you know what? No, that's never. this. Had, no, that's, that's okay. <laughs> Get that out of there. No. We'll talk about Ingress another time. But uh, to finish up with the, I'll. I'll in later episodes, I'll come up with some other strings that you can tie together for NFC tags. Um, but well, that was what just I to would show love the to do is combine that with a Qi charger, so that you can charge and activate a bunch of things at the same time. Yeah. That would be my perfect bed st uh, nightstand f uh, phone docking station. Yeah, totally. charge and turn everything off. Right, and uh, like so, in you, there's. Uh, in this NFC tools tab, you can uh, tools app. You can really drill down into stuff like you can have uh, Bluetooth be toggleable. Toggleable is that a word? Toggleable. Well, where if you tap it once, it turns it on. If you tap it again, it turns it off. So if you like, oh, I got in my car and I want Bluetooth on. I'm getting out of my car. I don't want or Wi-Fi or GPS. Yeah. yeah. Although I notice you can't turn on GPS or put your phone into airplane mode without root access, which I guess is an Android security thing. Right. But um, so there's some there's some pros and cons to NFC, but the big one is it doesn't require a power source for passive devices. So you can just you know stick these somewhere and you don't have to think about it again. You just tap your phone to it. Um, but some of the drawbacks are the range is just about a few inches, um, which is good. Which is actually good. Which you is good. That. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the transfer speed is a lot slower than something like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. But you're not going to be really read writing a lot of stuff anyway. Um, but if you've ever used Android Beam or S Beam on Samsung phones, I think is what it's called, what that does is it uses NFC to start the pairing, and then it launches into a direct Wi-Fi mode, and then that's how you're able to right. transfer like bigger files and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's pretty nifty. Yeah, mm -hmm. that actually, we should, we should mention that, because a lot of people are saying, oh, I transfer via NFC. No, you kick yeah. off the transfer with NFC. They learn how to communicate with one another, but then it uses a different technology, either Y Direct or Y Die or Bluetooth, or actually some of these actually transfer over uh, their cellular networks, which is strange. Uh, huh. But yeah, it's, it's it's roundabout. Yeah, it's a roundabout way. But yeah, so I've, I've been having fun with these tags, and uh, I think what I'm going to do for myself is I'm going to put one on my motorcycle. So then, <laughs> you, well, I want to do that because. Motorcycles are gen are dangerous, all right? I, I agree with that. But I want to alert certain people that I'm riding my motorcycle. So something, if you don't hear from me for a few hours, maybe something happens. So I'm going to have it, like, send a text message to my uh, my wife. That sounds weird now. Uh, send a text message to my wife so she knows that I'm riding my bike. But then also I'll probably, I'm thinking of tying it in. If you watched episode, 90, I think it's 96 with Patrick, uh, tie it in with if this, then that. And so when a, when a tag, like if a tag generates like a, a check-in or something like that, I'll have if this, then that also tag me in it. I'm sorry. You could also uh, just put one in your seat uh, on so the bike so that, yeah, keep your phone yeah. in your back pocket. So well, there was a demonstration video that we did a while back um, between here at the Twitch studios. Are we not going to, can we, can we play that video? Yeah, I believe you starred in this old educational film. Yes, okay, yes. We were showing how to uh, secretly send uh, messages with using NFC. All right, let's All right. take a look. Let's just, yeah. So this is, I mean, early days, 2012. This is a new NFC. technology that allows smartphones to transfer data between each other simply by tapping the phones together. Of course, there is the standard method of transferring data. Hey, Brian. Hey, Jeff. I have a photo I'd like to share with you. Oh, yeah? Here you go. <laughs> But that, say, let's that's exactly have some fun with it. Boing. That, Why that's not the sound it makes? Yeah. The okay. high five. The low five. Behind the back. Between the legs. Now let's say you want to secretly share a photo with a friend and not let your friends or colleagues see the transcript. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, we, whoa. we probably whoa, should whoa, stop, whoa, stop whoa, the video whoa, whoa, here. Whoa, whoa, um, <laughs> but that's, uh, what that's... What is going on? That's, oh, boy. Yeah, that... Uh, no, 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 Alex, Alex, can we cut the video? I mean, we just wanted to uh, give people an idea of how... No. No! Uh, uh, now I have to burn my eyes. Here, Thanks. Oh, oh man. We uh, that. Photos so this... Two yeah, friends. don't transfer files do think, this way. Brian? Aren't those great photos? Hey, Brian, I've got a cool photo I want to share with you. 
My phone's not in my pocket. Neither is mine. This has been another technology tip from Tefu and Inside Twit. Uh, we weren't supposed to show the whole video. So, uh, you were married, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was in my wild bachelor days. Transferring NFC oh. files willy-nilly. But see, get, have some fun with NFC. Uh, we did. Certainly not regrettable at all. But anyway, Padre, that, enough about NFC. What if I wanted to fix stuff? <laughs> if you wanted to fix things, we, we could talk about... I'm sorry, I, I just have to burn that out of my, my, my brain. My, my, my brain hole doesn't want to get rid of the image. Mm. But okay, when we come back, we're going to be talking a little bit about Project Lunchbox. You know, we were going to be assembling a remote control buggy, uh, but there's a couple of pieces of technology that you should know about before you assemble your own. Speaking of assembling your own, you know what one of the best ways to assemble kits is? Uh, having the tools that you need for exactly. it. Exactly. The proper tools are absolutely necessary if you're going to be assembling a kit. There's, there is nothing that is more frustrating than starting a project and then realizing you don't have the tools to complete it. Or, even worse, not having the right tools. Yes, everyone's got a screwdriver. Yes, everyone's got a pair of tweezers. But do you have a screwdriver? Do you have the tweezers? Do you have the kit to work? with electronics on a small level, with models, with toys. Well, iFixit does. iFixit is the premier spot to go when you want tools. If you can go and do a close-up here, uh, iFixit is a free online repair uh, 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 manual for everything. And not only that, they, they have these tools, this iFixit Pro Toolkit that allows you to fill out the steps that you see in those manuals. They have more than 10,000 repair guides for everything from electronics like your smartphone, tablet, and game console to your home appliances, clothing, and even, yeah, your bike. They also have foolproof instructions to fix all your stuff. If you shattered your iPhone screen, if you need to repair the red ring of death on your Xbox, or swap the battery on your Galaxy S3, iFixit has got you covered with parts, tools, and repair guides. iFixit also makes the most trusted repair tools for consumer electronics, including this, the Pro Tech Toolkit. Now this has 70 tools to assist you with any mod, malfunction, or misfortune that comes your way. The toolkit is the gold standard for electronics work, from garage, ha garage hacking to the CIA and FBI, but more importantly, their unique tools are used by repair technicians everywhere. Now this includes iFixit 54-bit driver kit. That's what this is right here. It's got 54 standard specialty and security bits, including Phillips bits, Pentalo bits, Torx and Torx security bits, Tri-Wing bits, which is uh, more popular on video game consoles, and triangular bits, which are for McDonald's toys. So if you've ever wanted to hack apart a McDonald's toy, there you go. And, and Brian's trying to destroy my, my galaxy. <laughs> I want to destroy your phone. You know, I think it can also be used maliciously if you've got a co-host <laughs> who all, wants to break your stuff. It all comes down to the user. <laughs> now, they've also got that swivel top precision driver, which allows you to, to reach into difficult, uh, uh, hard to get places. And the flex extension right here, for uh, those, those uh, projects where you need to get around corners. Have you ever tried to uh, uh, tighten the fastener and it's not, you don't quite have the space? Well, that's what this is for. Get around that hard bend and continue your job. Now, it also has ESD safe precision tweezers for delicate manipulations, an anti static wrist, wrist strap that keeps your device safe from accidental discharge, nylon spudgers, metal spudgers, and plastic opening tools for prying, scraping, and the like. It's lightweight, compact, and durable, and it has this tool roll that makes it on the go for repair professionals and amateurs alike. Mm -hmm. It's only $64.95, and it's backed by a lifetime warranty. We swear by this kit, and you should too. Now, here's what we want you to do. We want you to try iFixit. With iFixit, you can fix it yourself, and iFixit can help. Visit iFixit.com slash twit for more than 10,000 free step-by-step -step guides iFixit also sells every part and tool that you'll need. We've used them extensively, extensively for our repairs. Enter the code KNOWHOW at checkout, and you'll save $10 off any purchase of $50 or more. That's iFixit.com slash twit. And we thank iFixit for their support of huh, know-how. You don't, you don't mind if there's like a I just, I just looked over there, there. like, what's going on with my stuff? I'm just going to leave it there for you. <sighs> Yo dog, yo dog, I heard you like phones.
<laughs> well, you have two of them. You don't need both of them, do you? Well, this one kind of broke. Actually, oh. which is why I'm going to be using the. Is one just for Ingress? Yeah. Actually, yeah, I'm going to be using this kit for uh, Shannon's Nexus Five. That That's broke. right. We have to, I need to fix we have to that. Fix her screen. That's right. Uh, hopefully, by next week, I'm going to do that. All right. Good. That's a nice little project <laughs> we'll for people. Coral break it more. <laughs> Didn't you break it? No, 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 no. That was the uh, Samsung S4 Active that fell off while I was riding and just, pfft, yeah. But anyway, there's only so much there's stuff so you can much. fix. All right. All right, let's talk about differentials. Uh, if, if you've done any sort of auto repair, you've heard about a differential. Yes. If you've ever played with a remote control vehicle, if you've read through the instructions, you've probably read about something about a differential, but a lot of people don't actually know what a differential does. Are you going to tell us, Padre? I, I am. Now, <laughs> uh, imagine this. Imagine you've got a vehicle that has uh, rear-wheel drive. Okay, yeah. Okay, and so the rear wheels turn to propel the car forward. And in fact, we've, yeah, we we've got a little example, example right here. here. Let's <laughs> clear up some space. We've got, uh, we've got our project lunchbox. So, yeah, it, exactly. So, if, so here's the front of the car. Yes, here's the front of the car. If it's traveling, the rear wheels are going to, to, to move at the same speed, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. The sense. problem is what happens when it turns? When you turn... Uh, the outside wheel has to cover more distance. Right. So it actually has to rotate faster. And the inside goes slower. Goes slower, right. If you have the two drive wheels going the same speed as you're trying to make They're your turn, fighting each it kind of fights each other, right? Either the, either the outside wheel will kind of have to hop or the inside wheel will have to spin in place. Okay. It's, it's horrible, horrible for handling. So we created something called a differential. And all <laughs> it does is it allows for differential rotational speeds of the wheels. That's what this does. Oh. It, it allows the wheels to, to rotate at different speeds from one power source, okay. which, which is actually very important. And let me explain that. Uh, if you go ahead and run that first one, this is what a standard uh, orbital differential, what the planetary gear looks like inside of a car. The idea is you've got power being applied to that big gear, which rotates those two small gears. Those small gears are engaged with the drive shafts. And as you can see, as the vehicle starts to turn, one side will turn more quickly. Hmm. Now. How that's governed is determined by what kind of differential it is. Uh, now, the, the first type of differential, and Alex, if you go ahead and switch to that, the, that first, the, it's the second video actually. This is what's called an open differential. Now, is this the most common kind of? This is the most common because it's also the easiest to maintain. It's the cheapest to put together. The idea is the power goes to the shaft to the gear with the least resistance. The power follows the path of least resistance, which is good because it's cheap. Right. The problem is, as you can see here, what if happens- If you're on ice. If you're on ice <laughs> or if, or for example, here, if yeah. we high side this car, all the power is going to be going to the wheel that and has it, no it goes nowhere. Right. So it's stuck. It's stuck. So again, very inexpensive, very easy to maintain, but also not great. I mean, right. it, it is for very cheap applications because you you if if you high side, you're stuck. All the power will just spin away because that's the path of least resistance. Not so good for burnouts either. Horrible for burnouts. <laughs> the nickname for my my uh, first car was the one wheel wonder. Because <laughs> you, you had, do you a had burnout an and just one yeah one yeah. wheel would spin. So yeah. like the whole passenger side would be smoky, but yeah. but that one wheel would spin like crazy. Oh yeah. Because like all the power no gets other. channeled to it. Honda Integra. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now we know why you ride a motorcycle. Okay, no, there's, there's a second type of differential. The second type mm -hmm. of differential tries to solve the problems of the open differential. Okay. So the, the problem with the open differential, of course, is be that since the power always goes to the path of least resistance, if you have one wheel that's got no traction, all the power is going to go to the wheel with no traction, which right. is counterproductive. You, suddenly you're not moving. A limited slip differential, and Alex, if you go ahead and run this, mm -hmm. it changes it. it. It uses a method, either electronic or with braking or hydraulic. For example, if I put a brake on the wheel that's spinning, the power has to go to the other wheel, right? right. Or if I have a hydraulic system that, that guarantees that some power is going to go to the other wheel, that's another way of, of doing limited slip. Or as we do in RC cars, you use sort of a clutch. You have two plates on top of the differential gear that has ball bearings in it. And the tighter you make those plates, the more power it will supply to both wheels, no matter which was the path of least resistance. Okay. A limited slip differential will guarantee that at least some of the power will go to the wheel with the most traction. Okay, and I, and 
I've heard in the past that LSDs are more of like a sporty car thing, or it's like a something you'd find in a sport car. Or well, everyone has LSDs now, so all cars. My unless, car didn't. Well, yeah, back then, but all <laughs> cars today have some sort of limited slip differential, okay. and it's that's a safety feature. Okay, okay. Uh, it's it just because you don't want one tire to suddenly spin. just yeah. spin. That would that's a bad thing. So they all cars today will guarantee in one method or another, electronically, hydraulically that some of the power will go to the wheel with the most traction, which means right. it will always move you forward, which is good because if you keep your forward momentum, you'll probably get out of whatever, whatever situation caused you to lose traction in the first place. Okay, but right. there's one more, isn't there? There's one more, and the, the, uh, the, the third one that we want to talk about, and there's a lot of different types of differentials, and there's also subtypes, but the third one that you'll see on RC cars is called a locking differential. The idea of a locking differential is you have some sort of mechanism that eliminates the differential. It locks it so that power is being distributed equally to both tires. No matter what. No matter what, which essentially defeats the purpose of a differential. Right, Because so if you're turning with a lock differential, does that mean one wheel won't spin They'll both spin at equal... They're, all, they're, they're going to spin at, at equal speeds, mm -hmm. uh, and which means that you get back to the pro problem of it doesn't want to turn. Right. But it's incredibly popular on four-wheel drive vehicles because if you've ever been off-road... And you're going over rocks and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, you don't want wheels to spin. Yeah. Uh, also, a locking differential helps with the torque. It gives you tons of low-end torque. So let's say you're rock crawling. Right. You lock the differential so that all four wheels are rotating at the same speed. And so wheels can be up in the air, but you're still getting power exactly. to the ground. So okay. even if you've got two wheels that you know <laughs> are suspended, that yeah. are suspended, you're yeah. still going to get power from the remaining two wheels that are on the ground. Uh, it, again, horrible if you want to <laughs> turn. Right. But, but it's great if you just need traction. If you yeah. just need to push through. Uh, most locking differential st systems have uh, some sort of automated way to disengage the locking. It, it used to be when I was growing up, way, way back when. <laughs> they had cars back then? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they, there, was a, there was a lock. You actually had to get out of the car. I remember those. And you had to those. turn these locks on the wheels to lock the yep. wheels into place. Pain in the butt and uh, not really practical, but I, I think it was, I think, Someone's going to correct me in the chat room. I think it was the Jeep Cherokee that first introduced in-cabin locking. It was oh. a button you could push that would lock the differentials. It's probably the first thing to break, too. Well, the problem with that was <laughs> people didn't read the manual, and it said, do not engage the locking differential while moving. And people would be on the road going, what does this do? Oh, no. And you'd push the button, and you'd hear this no. horrific noise, oh, and then no. the, the <laughs> diff light would turn on. Ooh. And you, you could still drive, you, could yeah. just, you wouldn't be able to lock it anymore. Oh no. I fun. feel like that needs to be one of those buttons where like, you put <laughs> two keys in at the same time and turn them and you have to flip up the glass and push the button. I have a, I have a cousin who was a mechanic and he was talking about that. He goes, yeah, we call that button money. <laughs> yeah, People push that button and we get money. Ooh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Oof, it, it was if, if you were stupid. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, so that's the three different kinds of differentials. Well, that so. we're going to be dealing with. So when we yeah. start building, we, we are hoping to continue building models because right. it is a great way for you to learn about uh, technology but on a smaller scale. So in this model, we've learned about motors, we've learned about powertrains, we've learned about how servos work. Now we're going to learn about transmissions and there's cool. a, there's so many different types of transmissions. This one is relatively inexpensive, mm -hmm. but we hope to show off some uh, you know limited slip and locking differentials in the future. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when we come back, we're going to be showing you how we built the transmission stage for this, the how we actually put all the gears together and uh, started to get our lunchbox project a little bit of power. But before we do that, mm -hmm. I'm kind of hungry. Oh, you thinking of some snacks? Yeah, we need we need some. Worked we up need an appetite with yeah. all that knowledge. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that uh, you may know that I do is. I eat a lot, and unfortunately, I eat mostly unhealthy stuff. There's, there's a lot of snacks that vie for my uh, my hunger, and unfortunately, chocolate and sugary treats often win out. <sighs> well, you know they're not good for me either, Padre. They're not so. good for you, but <laughs> what we've got is we've got Nature Box. This has this has been an instant hit in the Brick House because what they do is they give you healthy snacks, non-sugary, uh, non-nasty snacks that you can eat that are that are healthy. Everything's from flax seeds to uh, to uh, where are these? 
I love the Santa Fe corn sticks, but I think those are all gone. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, every time those come in, I see them stashed in your desk. So yeah. it'd be nice if you Shh, shared don't, them. Don't totally. Send them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, I've got like five bags of the Santa Fe corn sticks. They're just really good. They're like you know, yeah, just pop. Thanks for sharing. But I mean, it's got no high fructose corn syrup. Uh, you know, it, it's it's going to give you what you need in your your dietary uh, right. regimen. You can drill down to the things that you you want in your snacks. Right. They've got zero trans fats. They've got zero high fructose corn syrup. Mm. And there is nothing artificial. Now, NatureBox sends great tasting snacks right to your door with free shipping anywhere in the United States. And this is how it works. We click on the continue button on their webpage, and then we get to choose between three subscription options. Then we place our order. Now, once we became members, we were able to select the snacks that we wanted in our monthly box. You can select by dietary needs. For example, if you're vegan, if you're soy free, if you're gluten conscious, if you're lactose free, nut free and non-GMO. You can also select by taste, which is something I, I never did. You got savory, you got sweet, and you got spicy. These are sweet. Those are um, yeah, those are distinct flavors. And uh, you know, I, I always just thought snacks are snacks, but no, sometimes I'm craving the spicy, sometimes I want something savory, and I'm always well, looking for something sweet. I mean, I think I told you last time we were doing Nature Box, I'm a diabetic and sometimes I need snacks, but yeah. I don't want to binge on potato chips or candy. They had the, the, uh, the, the like roasted peas. Those were really good. They're almost like corn nuts, but they're not corn nuts. I love them. Yeah, and notice how a lot of those disappear. It's so weird we can't find those things anymore. Oh, we'll desk. have to order more. Well, the next time you get cranky and hungry, come by my desk and <laughs> go ahead and pick up a pack of, uh, of Nature Box snacks. If you're snacks. in the Twit studio, stop by Padre's desk yeah. for a snack. Now, the one that Leo likes are the guilt-free coconut date energy bars. Those things are really, really good. They're also never to be found. In I was going to say, I haven't tried those either. Yeah, well, he's got those. I've got the can of, uh, Santa, uh, Santa Fe corn sticks. Joss wanted to take the sriracha uh, um, uh, cashews. And give them to his bird? Well, no, but then he said, oh, I, don't, I don't eat milk. All right. Well, his loss. For me. Yeah, forget it. <laughs> but if he did want a snack, I'm sure he could find yeah. something. So here's what we want you to do. We want you to try a nature box. See if, if they might be as good for you as they are for us. Right now, you can get 50% off your first box by going to naturebox.com slash twit. Stay full. Stay strong. Go to naturebox.com slash twit. And we thank Naturebox for their support of know-how. I'm just going to hang on to this. Mm, no. This is not going near your desk. Mm, you're going to get hurt. Hey. Now, we need to bring you into uh, some of the more intimate parts of Project Lunchbox. <laughs> oh, okay, phew. I was wondering what you were going to say. Take a look. Oh. Most of the tools you'll need to build the Lunchbox are packaged into the kit. You will need a screwdriver, a pair of snips, and maybe a set of needle nose pliers. The kit comes with a set of detailed instructions and all the parts from the screws and bolts to the gears and plastic pieces are labeled and bagged, so you should be able to assemble your model as long as you don't skip any steps. Each step includes a letter number code so you know which parts to pull, but we're going to give you an overview of what assembling the transmission will look like. The first thing you'll need to do is to snip the transmission housing from its plastic holder. Try to cut as close to the transmission's outer surface as possible without cutting material out of the transmission shell itself. Later, you can take an X-Acto knife and carefully trim away any remaining plastic chads. The kit comes with a bag of nylon thrust or sleeve bearings. These will work just fine, but if you want a little more longevity from your model and significantly less friction in your drivetrain, spend $15 to get yourself a set of metal ball bearings. These ball bearings will be used anytime there is a shaft that must spin freely in the transmission case. Each half of the transmission has a chamber that will house and position the drive shafts for that wheel. You'll need two ball bearings for each shaft to properly support the weight and promote free spinning. You can seat the bearings with just your fingers or use the back end of a screwdriver to lightly tap them into place. The two drive shafts are the thickest pieces of steel in the kit. Each has a threaded receiver on one side and a hex nut on the other. There are two beveled gears in the kit, each with a hexagonal cutout that will allow the drive shaft to mate with the gear so the assembly can spin together. Because of the layout of the gears in the transmission, the shaft in the right half of the transmission will need to be slightly spaced from its ball bearing. A small metal sleeve slides over the shaft to provide the proper standoff. Once the beveled gear is mated to its drive shaft, and the right side shaft has its spacer, they can both be inserted into the respective halves of the transmission case. 
give each shaft assembly a few spins to make sure there's no binding and that they spin true. Let's talk about lube. Lube is your friend. A small tub of grease will be included in the lunchbox kit. It should be applied to all the gears, shafts, and moving parts. A thin film will be enough. Anything more is counterproductive. Also remember that you've got ball bearings on your shafts, so you don't need grease to reduce friction between what would have been the shaft and a plastic sleeve. With the beveled gear and drive shafts installed, we now need to install the counter gear. The 50 tooth side will make contact with the motor's pinion gear, while the lower geared side will turn the differential gear. Since we want the gear to turn with as little friction as possible, we need to install two more ball bearings into the inserts on the gear itself. Note that one insert is smaller than the other. Your ball bearing kit should include one slightly smaller ball bearing. This is where it goes. The differential gear is an interesting assembly because it has three bezel gears at its center. You install the bevel gears using three small rods. Once the bevel gears are in place, the differential gear will be sandwiched between the two large bevel gears, spinning the drive shafts, creating an open differential. Turning the differential gear will rotate the small bevel gears, which will be engaged with the large bevel gears, which will turn the drive shafts, driving the power towards the shaft with the least resistance. A small pin goes through the differential gear into small receivers at the ends of each drive shaft to keep the gears aligned once the transmission case is closed. Start final assembly in the right half of the transmission. The counter gear goes in, fat side closest to the wall, then the large bevel gear goes above it. The differential gear is seated on top of the large bevel gear. Make sure that the shaft through the differential locks into the receiver on the drive shaft. Also make sure that the teeth of the differential gear are slotted with the teeth of the smaller part of the counter gear. Give the combined assembly a few turns to make sure there is no binding and to check if sufficient lubrication has been applied to all gears. Take the left side of the transmission with its shaft and large bevel gear already in place and slot the shaft of the differential gear into the receiver on its drive shaft. Use screws to bind the two sides together and lock the transmission into place. Now, we need to mount the electric motor. Take the small brass pinion and using an Allen wrench included in the kit, partially install the grub screw into the slot on the pinion gear. This is what will secure the pinion gear to the drive shaft of the motor. The pinion gear has a flat side that will line up with the flat side of the motor shaft, but we need to properly space the gear. Not so close as to make the gear rub against the body of the motor, but not so far as to misalign the pinion and spur gear. A small piece of cardboard is included in the kit. Use it to space the pinion gear to the proper standoff. We now need to attach the motor to the motor mount. This is the part that will hold the motor in the proper position against the transmission case. It's also the part that can be changed to allow the transmission to work with different sized motors. The motor attaches to the mount, and the mount is screwed into the transmission along with the end cap on the other side of the transmission assembly. Now we need to install the shock mounting points on each arm of the transmission assembly. Two small plastic mounts, each the mirror of the other, need to have a small brass ball connector installed with the included tool. Each can fit properly only on one side of the transmission, so if it doesn't line up with the mounting post, just swap the sides. When we integrate the transmission with the chassis, these mounts will be used to connect the shock absorbers. Electric motors have a lot of torque and big wheels on a buggy have a tendency to make the vehicle rear up on its end, so Tamaya included a wheelie bar with the lunchbox. A small plastic wheel is held by a steel assembly, which is then bolted onto the back of the transmission. The last step is to cinch the motor's leads against the motor can with the included tie wrap. This is to keep the wires from rubbing against the tires, especially under load. Though we won't be installing the wheels until the integration of the transmission with the chassis, it's worth taking a look at how the drive wheels will be attached to the transmission. Each drive shaft has a small hole just beyond the end of the transmission housing. A small metal pin is inserted into each hole, then the plastic wheel hub is slotted over that pin. The pin keeps the hub locked onto the drive shaft, and the hub keeps the wheel locked onto itself. If you've built the transmission properly, turning the drive shaft on one side should create an opposite rotation on the other. If you get opposite rotation, it means that both drive shafts are locked onto the differential gear and that the pinion on the motor has properly engaged the spur gear. If the wheels spin in the same direction, or if the opposite wheels don't spin at all, then either the motor isn't properly installed 
or the bevel gears are not properly seated. Congratulations! You have now fully assembled a functional transmission for your lunchbox. That was actually a lot of fun. That looks like a lot I, of fun. I really do. I, I love building those models, again, because it, you can go to the toy store and you can buy something like this. Yeah. But if you actually build it, you know how it works. You have intimate knowledge now. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it's, any gearhead will know this feeling, right? It's like, yeah, it's one thing to own a bike or own a car. It's another thing to be able to take it apart. And, and so many things these days are so electronic that you can't actually get in there. Yeah. It's nice to have a kit that's so simple, it's just gears and it's just right. physics. And it, it not only does it apply to this, this little car, but it's the same thing that you would see in real cars and stuff. Like it transfers over. That's right. pretty cool. Yeah. Like for example, if we take a look inside this, because in uh, in the next episode of Project Lunchbox, we're actually going to show you how to build out the steering and how to integrate the systems. Expensive. But if we go ahead and take off the, oh, oh, sorry, you what found my you snack. Do? Oh, there's candy in here. Hold on. I thought that's what it was supposed. It's a lunchbox, right? Okay, continue. Okay, if you look inside, the, the transmission is one part of a, a very complicated system. Uh, we're gonna show you next time how you actually connect the shocks, how you build out the steering, and how you uh, you create the link, um, uh, adjust the linkage, and then how all the electronics work. So there's a lot left in Project Lunchbox, and this is just gonna be the first of what we hope to be a long series of project builds. Yeah, that is, that is really cool. By the way, I, I, I've noticed that uh, the lunchbox wasn't at uh, at its normal place this morning, and uh, it seems to have gotten scraped up overnight. Do you have any idea? Uh, yes. What happened? So that? as I found out, asphalt has a lot of traction. So when you try and do a power slide on the lunchbox, you do a power flip down down the road in my neighborhood, waking up all your neighbors at midnight. So uh, I learned that though. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm not going to do it again. But it, you know what it does do? It hops curbs really well. It hops curbs it incredibly well. It jumps curbs, and then there's this bark patch out in front of my yard. It just kicks up all the bark. I'm going to do like a slow motion video. So. Well, you know, I'm glad that I could build these models so you could destroy them. It's uh, <laughs> You build them, I break them. It's a partnership. <laughs> That's how it works. All right, now we know that we hit you with a lot of information this episode, everything from the NFC tags to uh, the transmission to how we actually build the transmission for Project Launchbox. And we, we don't want to flood your knowledge hole, so we've given you a nice, easy way to get our show notes. So where can they find them, Brian? They can find them at twit.tv slash kh, and that's where all our past episodes also live. So if you think you, uh, you might have missed something during the episode, definitely check out the show notes, and there will be links to, uh, well, for example, today they'll be linked to the apps that we used for NFC and some other stuff. Yeah, all the, all the information oh. about the transmission. Yeah, whatever and, Padre did. Yeah, and then the step-by-step -step <laughs> guide for assembling yeah. your transmission. Now, if you want to, to contact us, you can always email. Actually, if you want to contact us with a complaint, email yes, us at knowhow at twit.tv. That, uh, that gets sent to Jeff Needles. I love complaints so to my please, email. So please, yeah, send that to, actually, really, <laughs> go send, send some complaints to, Jeff, to no. knowhow at twit.tv because we want Jeff to have to, to reply to all of those. But if you actually want to talk to us about what you'd like to see in future episodes of Know How, join our Google Plus group. Where can they find that? Uh, well, I guess if you just Google search you got it, yeah. Know How community. Unfortunately, our link yeah. shortener is kind of busted right We're gonna now. We're going to have to work on that. Yeah, but jump in there. We've almost got 7,000 members. And yes. the cool thing about this community is we don't really have to answer all that much anymore. We jump no. in every once in a while, but this group is filled with some really bright people. In fact, a lot he, of no he's got a nitro-powered uh, remote control car. Uh, that's one of the ones I want to do. They're loud and they're noisy, but oh my Look goodness, are they shock fast. system on there too. Oh, they're awesome. They're um, awesome. Uh, the people in our group are just, they're, they're brilliant. Brilliant yeah. in their own right. Yeah, it's just a fun place to look around because people pose show ideas. Mm -hmm. They pose uh, links to projects that they've done from the show. So just a cool place to hang yeah. out. And we are going to be taking some of your questions and integrating them into our show. So if you've got a question for the guys, go ahead mm -hmm. and drop one into our Google Plus group. Now, Google's not the only place they can find us. No, if you want to keep track of Padres falling asleep on the beanbag or pictures of my corgi, where can, they, where can they follow you? You can find me at Twitter. <laughs> Uh, dot com slash Padre SJ. That's at Padre SJ. And uh, you're at... Uh, uh, I'm at Cranky underscore Hippo. Yeah. That's my spirit animal. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> uh, now, next time, what are we doing next time? I think next time, oh, oh we're going to be doing something with our uh, our upgrade project. Uh, upgrade we, we've been project. playing with a desktop, and we're going to show you the best way to get some more yes, uh, juice. All the benchmarking you did. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, that was a lot of work for you. But until <laughs> next time, I'm Father Robert Balliser. And I'm Brian Burnett. And now that you know, go do it. Go lube it. Go do it. <laughs>